Pricing Masters, your code to unlock the profitability and growth of your company. The best pricing and monetization strategies from value ships experts. Hello everyone and welcome to the Pricing Masters pricing series about SaaS, about pricing, about the product, about the value. This is Maciej. My name is Chris. And today we're going to discuss something very popular, something that pretty much always is associated with pricing, top mistakes the SaaS companies make on their pricing pages. What do you think of it? Uh, I have a challenge for you, actually. I have plenty of thoughts, uh, I actually, I'm actually ready. But the challenge that I have is that I give one mistake, you give the other mistake, who first runs out of mistakes that pricing uh, that uh, SaaS companies are doing on their pricing pages, uh, loses. And okay. the trophy is pay for lunch okay. for all right. the crew okay. today. Yeah, okay. deal. Okay. Deal. We'll make a deal. Got it. So my... We have just invented it. This is not something that I was prepared for, <laughs> but okay, let's do it. So if I lose, I have like the... Yeah. <laughs> okay, so, so, okay, you in invented the challenge, you start. I start. So, uh, lack of uh, the endings, the roundings on the, on the pricing page. So frequently, uh, if you think of it, uh, you are uh, charging your clients for uh, 26 or 27 uh, seven dollars while when you think about it your conversion based on the multiple studies wouldn't drop by percent if you actually round the price by two dollars in this situation so rounding it from 27 to 29 from 46 to 49 so this is a common mistake but apparently, if you think of it, uh, and if you have thousands of customers, you're losing plenty uh, of MRR potential. Okay, so you're saying that the magic numbers, yes, is how it's called, exactly. the, the nines and fives, actually, sometimes seven, depending on the country. 90% of cases, Nine. I would say. Yeah. It's, it's not one serves them all, for sure, but as a rule of thumb, rounding uh, is, I think, good tool again okay. to you interesting thing is that in our like european slash us based economies the nines are fine however if you move to middle east to asia and you want to play there different numbers matter in some countries nine is a bad number in some so you kind of need to be careful if you have a global product there but definitely this is this is a good good take so in general, like nines still work, but to it, I would say it's above 249, they, they stop, stop. 349, they kind of become less valid. And this is where you can basically- it's Depending on the reason. Yeah, yeah, but, uh, but basically, okay. But I reached rounding. the point. Okay, you see the point in roundings. I would say the biggest, from for me, one of the easiest things that I would say is like displaying only monthly prices. So not having an annual uh annual toggle battery and actually displaying the prices in annual because too many companies i see that they have only like they start from monthly prices anchoring the client on the higher price point which is okay but at the same time you can very easily present your product as potentially more affordable but uh, with the annual prices this is like a very 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 cheap trick i would say but this is something that is Pretty much. And it boosts your conversion to the annual, actually, right? So, for example, if you already have a toggle, and this is like 2A, it's not for my point, for, 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 for the record, but if you already have a toggle, I would recommend to start visualizing uh, when you go to the pricing landing page, uh, first the annual uh, annual prices, but in the monthly matter. So you anchor your clients and first price that you can see is actually lower. Uh, because monthly pr uh, yearly price in the monthly uh, matter is okay. typically lower. Sure. So it's one one. Yes, you receive what a point. Would you say, what would you say about another pricing mistake that we usually see? pricing page mistake? Not pricing mistake, but pricing page specifically. Also regarding the UX on the pricing page. UX wise, I think that not visualizing or not showing which plan is the most popular or have the biggest value 
or is recommended. The, the framing. Yes, the framing, right? Because we see from our research, from our clients, actually, that if you actually steer your customers to the certain plan that mostly, most likely, I don't know, have the biggest margin or have the biggest value for the customers, if you steer them to this particular plan, it will increase uh, the conversion on this particular plan. So simple trick, but actually can help you with, with MRR increase. Sure, that is that is pretty obvious. So best value, most recommended, you know, all these things. This is still valid, right? Mm -hmm. Please do that okay. for, for sure. I would have a harder one here. Tell me. Uh, and this is something I would say an obvious psychological mistake. The companies who read too much, like the founders or, or managers or anyone who is decision maker, reads a book, reads a book about behavioral economics, like Kahneman or, or Arielis or whatever. Very good books, but the point is they try to play with anchoring, right? That we will anchor our customers to the uh, to the higher numbers. And yes, anchoring works. Anchoring is effectively uh, a, a, a psychological phenomenon, a psychological heuristics that if you show me the higher number, in a nutshell, I am willing to pay more for uh, this product and see the other products as cheaper. So very often companies do something like this. We have good, better, best pricing with the traditional one. We have like 49, 99, and there is like a plan 249 or you know 299 because the logic people people go is like we'll anchor the customers on the right plan and so people will purchase the middle plan but it's not the point the point is to have your strategy differentiated across different plans so you capture the, the willingness to pay across different buyer personas and different customer segments so ideally you want to have a plan for customers who are more price sensitive customers who are regular customers who can pay a little bit more with the adults and the customers who are like maximizers usually 10 to 15 percent and also maybe in an enterprise level if you can if your product can make up to it but the thing thing is like if you want to make anchoring only for the sake of anchoring this is actually working the opposite customers are not stupid it can work like let me let, let me challenge this one it can work you know on the very short run uh I have seen, especially in B2C SaaS companies, it might work, but in a short run, but I totally agree with you that if you want to build sustainable business, pricing one, uh, pricing wise, you should actually have the plan for different personas and you have the persona who is maximalist, will buy the most expensive plan. Nevertheless, you should provide the value for well, the money. Yes, yes. So this has to be a value. Value foundation is critical and then you can play with psychological tricks, right? This is kind of the the uh, the kind of the message that I is it getting tense because it's two two? Do you have like you no, know not not, 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 really. not, not, not yet. Uh, okay. let, let's push. Let's okay, push. so so two two uh, deuce. So for me, uh, the other mistake uh, that companies are doing are actually not giving uh, the direction to the clients for whom this plan or this product is for. I remember I... one uh, one case studies that we did with one of our clients. We put two sentences above the plans, who is the target persona for this particular plan. So for the example, individual, perfect for free freelancers who are using X number of what we are producing. The second one, team, perfect for SMB companies that are not, that don't have, I don't know, marketing agencies who are helping them, uh, professional, uh, for big marketing agencies, etc. So. What you should do and what I believe works or I know that works is actually providing more guidance than only the most popular to your target client. So telling them which plan they should choose based on the needs that they have or situation that they are currently in. So what you're saying is basically aligning the plans, not with the, some random good, better, best, whatever, but rather aligning the plans with the very specific buyer persona and customer segments that we're trying to serve mm -hmm. telling clearly which customer segments are we serving with this plan and explaining this on a website in a different way than most companies do it is like good for small companies medium companies big companies like exactly exactly so you should showing the use case you should give a bit more of okay. course it can't be you know 10 pages you know why blah 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 stuff like this but giving a bit more explanation like one two sentences 
uh, can really help in conversion with uh, yeah. aqua, uh, aqua, uh, aqua acquisition and it can actually differentiate you versus your uh, your your competitors so free to two i would What's say like? sure i would say kind of to build on that but a little bit different but don't steal my idea. i don't understand kind of thing i'm um uh i'm all about uh, a little bit becoming a little bit more worthy on the pricing page because there is this common myth that people don't read Mm -hmm. It's not true. People read and people like to read what they see on the pricing page and they really can digest a lot of... I'm not saying that you need to write the whole essay on the pricing page, but I know that graphic-wise, you you know, from the graphic design perspective, you want to have this, you know, very little, like, minimalistic plan. That's great. But take a look at the Slack pricing page where we can display it here. It's like... Slack has very nicely written value propositions for each plan and they also have the description of the plan without displaying the features in a, some kind of you know checkbox type of grid. The the feature comparison is below default, you know, kind of below the first screen. Then you have the whole matrices of what is in the plan and what it's not but they have the value proposition and they have the main value drivers in the plan. So this is something that I would build on. So not to display all the features so you have all this like Excel matrix effectively that is put in the, on the pricing page and showing the, the different type of feature, but rather value proposition. And I, I'm not seeing this chart right now, but if I remember it well and tell me how, how, how it goes, but Slack Enterprise plan has Peace of mind with enterprise level security and compliance. Uh -huh. I think this is kind of like, but and on the enterprise plan, on the right plan, it's like peace of mind for you, a CTO or or a person who is actually a purchaser here. Peace of mind with security level, with the enterprise level security and compliance. You see, like clearly, this is the value of the enterprise. Peace of mind, right? Mm -hmm. And then it explains what is included. And then below default, you actually have all the features listed down. And I think that companies don't leverage their precise value propositions enough when it comes to the to the pricing pages. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I, I, I fully agree. So if we think of a perfect pricing page, just to sum up, uh, there should be, uh, if there are plans, right, there should be a most popular on top before you present the price, but on the same screen you have for whom it is, a bit more vocal than for big companies. Below the price, you have a bit of a description. The other mistake that I have is actually when you have the uh, small description and you know the value proposition, actually that you give the random features in random orders. I mean, for me, what should be definitely above the fall is things that create value and are aligned with the value. So if you have, I don't know, some feature that is, you know, used by 2% of your clients, and if you're just displaying it above the fall, it's clearly the mistake because it won't drive actually the, 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 the decision. And remember that sometimes, you know, uh, for especially SME tools, uh, you don't have like five days to you know decipher all the features that they have you go you look if this uh, this, exactly. this this is actually good for your use case and you look for one two three four the mo most important features and this is what should be below default so you have the if you have plans you have plans you have price uh, we, the, we, we talk about price that it should be rounded you have which one that more is the most popular for whom it is good value proposition and then below three four core features per plan that, uh, that are the most the needle, yes that are yes. putting the Do you agree that, that? Do you uh, count, are you counting points no uh, I, I was like four, four, four yes yeah, anyway. anyway, we kind of will we'll have this, we lost it we lost it but uh i think it's 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 it's, it's three four like this is something for me right now um so agree on that uh i would say Additionally, uh, to, to kind of uh, to kind of build on that, it's like companies uh, showcasing uh, companies trying to differentiate on value metrics only. So we have like a certain value metrics. Let's say it's keywords or user, whatever it is. Like better or worse, whatever value metric you're using, but you also have certain differentiators in in the value metrics that you know. Uh, 
different exports you can do you can maybe users additional additional users you can do but basically most companies have like two or three value metrics one is the core one but mm -hmm. explaining the overall economics but they're like two to three value metrics and the only thing that differs between the plans is actually um, the value metric the number of the, 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 the number of the number right mm -hmm. so so this is some this is a mistake especially for for the beginning beginner companies when they want to have the good better best plan while at the same time they could have a very simple pricing page with the you know with a um, slider bar that is essentially okay tell us what you need how much and and and, and you're good to go you're receiving the pricing quote instead of unnaturally uh, artificially inflating your overall value proposition because I know that most companies want to be pumped, you know, like this small dog mm -hmm. in the in the mean. They want to be like we are so big. I understand that, but at the same time, again, customers are not stupid. They can easily see, ah, okay, middle one. This is this is what this is. Okay, fine, middle one. This is the the especially the a bit to be related, yeah, like shallow differentiation, something that is not really that you don't really have any that differentiate only by size right yeah. because yeah you, 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 uh, the... so it's a slider bar it's it's a slider that you can you can create because you don't have anything else to add it's a totally different story if you have a product like miro i never know it's miro or miro i i honestly don't know but what they have is they have this like whether you have the sharing opportunity whether you can have collaborators so something that literally changes the customer experience when using the product, mm -hmm. you know, so then you can obviously differentiate, but it all comes to the matrix of dividing the features on relative importance and willingness to pay, something that is very, very popular in the uh, in the pricing science, which are the core features you want to have in the standard plan, which are the premium features, which are the add-ons. But this is not a, this is not, not, a, not for not. today, but not 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 fully utilizing it i think this is this is this is important okay so to sum up differentiating only through uh, one core value metric differentiating by size i agree this is this is clearly a mistake the other one from my side would be actually also going back to the above default and below default uh, concept so if you are uh, and i've seen it like multiple times uh showing the enterprise plan somewhere you know at the at the bottom of the page contact sales if you are beyond the limits blah 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 stuff like this and uh, not showing it above default for me might be a mistake for the companies because what we did actually we've researched 350 uh, SaaS companies b2b and we've realized that if you are having enterprise on your uh, on your pricing and if you are showing a enterprise uh, plan so custom not 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 the name as their plan but the custom right the one that you need to contact sales in order to receive uh, they are you know showing it somewhere below and if you are showing it above actually what you can uh, receive is actually higher prices higher willingness to pay and this is a bit of a psychology nevertheless if you think about that and if you're an smb company and if you see that SaaS that you want to leverage use or serves enterprise enterprise level customers you want to know it because if they can match the standards the quality of enterprise right. fortune 500 fortune 1000 companies they most likely can also match your needs uh, they can be aligned with, uh, with with your needs so if you have a enterprise level um, if you have enterprise custom plan you should definitely show it above default because it can help uh, it can also push the needle for the smallest uh, smaller companies sure. that see that there is enter sure, enterprise sure. okay as well okay so so kind of mm, I, I would say com to conclude it a little bit on the on the ux side of the of the actual screen it's like most buyers in the SaaS space they are like b2b obviously and they are they will most likely they will be browsing on your via your pricing page on they will browsing your pricing page on their laptops pcs whatever so desktop mm -hmm. so we need to think of what is the screen size effectively i know the mobile optimization is important for google and everything i i get this but what we really need to think about is that we can really show this on the on the page and coming to that when you have many plans and everything but you also for instance want to have a freemium i think there's a very quick case study of servicate our client what they did is like they created cards 
different card for freemium which was created for like starter and it was free so you can always go the main plan was like the, there was a free plan you know like limited access but there was a there was a freemium component to it there was a main solution divided into one to three and there was a clear card for enterprise with whole value proposition of the enterprise plan and then contact sales but still they kind of played with the cards that you can use not adding the additional column but showing so the different create, you, you, know, you can create, create, create right? the ux and you can use the cards and 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 this is important but to what you said like companies if you have an enterprise level solution and you actually can deliver on the enterprise level solution, you can increase the overall willingness to pay by having this plan. And this is something that is that is uh, that is important. Yes. So it's five uh, five, five to four. Five, five, no, five, five to four. I've started. I've started. I've started. I've started. So it's mine. Yes. Okay. Um, Counting four. <laughs> no, no, not to stress it out. So I would say uh, additional thing is to. Coming back to the to the top is on the discounting level. Uh, usually companies have a little bit that their discounts are too big. Mm -hmm. uh, they have like 20%, 30% sometimes. Uh, there is a cool trick of like two months free. This is something you can or up to up to two months free. This is a cool one. Uh, but like the optimal discount level is between 13 to 14 to 17 percent. I mean it's a rule of thumb, but in general. But when while I, while I talk about discounting is that you need to play with the magic numbers here. So when you have this 99 to 89, 100, 149 to 119 or whatever, you need to see the logic of the discounts expanding. Mm -hmm. It's like with the Nutella jar. When you purchase a Nutella jar and it's, it's a small one, the price per milliliter is higher than within a bigger bar, but you with a bigger bigger jar, but you need to uh, but you need to kind of, you know that the overall price for the for the thing is higher. But that was a very smart so, so smart on you because you actually gave two hints here. Because at one hand side, the discount, you should visualize the discount. And if you are doing it, do it up to something, but show that you are actually giving the discount if they move from, uh, from, 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 from yearly to monthly, for example. The second thing is actually pricing logic, and that was my next one, but so now... You well, well, I will say this is... I will, I will, I'm fine with saying it's a one, so not playing... like, not playing uh, enough uh, with the opportunity for discounts. In a, I mean, differently. I would say not presenting the discounts in the right way. This is, this is the kind of, and, and then there are multiple layers to it, but kind of thinking deeply about how discounts work in general, right? Mm -hmm. uh, understood. So we have 10 tips. I think it's uh, uh, already, so it's five, five. For me, the, 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 the thing that is also very, you know, important pricing, pricing wise, is that something, sometimes I have the feeling that if I'm going to the pricing page itself, it's some totally different page, you know, with different UX, different color, stuff like that. So I think that it's very simple, yet true, that pricing page need to be consistent and need to talk about your product and the whole page needs to be consistent and pricing page needs to be within this consistency, right? So if you think of how it should be presented, make sure to make make nice presentation, give as much value to your products, maybe at the bottom of the page, give one more time the explanation, because from my perspective, the pricing page most likely will be the last page that the clients will visit at your uh, at your uh, at your website. It'll also yep. be the second page they most it visit. Is, it, the, fir the first most visited page, like usually eight to twelve percent of the traffic goes on the pricing page. Yeah. So if you want to, and of course it will be second because first you want to see the prices, then you will go to product, learn about the product, but then you will come back to the pricing page. So if there is a one page that you should optimize UX wise, color wise, color coding, it's a pricing page. It is a pricing page. Yeah, and 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 there is a research good design actually increases the, the willingness to pay. Exactly. So for me, not putting enough effort into the design itself, uh, you know, everything uh, with color, color, yeah, yeah. Uh, simplicity, accessibility uh, of, 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 of pricing page. If you have, uh, if, if somewhere you need to put more budget, 
put it into the pricing page. So mistake it is that you do not optimize. You optimize other pages uh, UX wise, uh, while you should, the, the first premium interpares should be the yeah. pricing so page. I'm glad that you have mentioned on the effort because where I see the companies where they stress about is when we're creating a pricing strategy and it's like, how do we name our plans? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. like, how do we name our plans? And where is like, and com mostly customers don't care. It can be basic pro premium, whatever. Us, and some companies try to get creative with like, you know, Ninja, Rocket, Rocket Sheep. whatever. <laughs> I, I, I would say like, go with the basic pro, whatever. It's fine. Mostly people don't care. Uh, I have done this research multiple times. I have never seen a difference in willingness to pay. Depending on the plan name, there are some differences. Where I have seen the differences wherever you have played with something that is... I don't know. I remember the customer was like... Um, there was something with the... They had this flower or trees, metaphors, and they were like small plant, big tree, a forest, you know, mm -hmm. stuff like that. People don't get it. You know, people don't usually get it. We are aligned with the S, M, L, XL, you know, all these like kind of size, different sizes. I would say this is, this is, this is, this is the way here. And company is stressing too much about the naming of the plants rather than all these elements that you have mentioned here. Not stressing enough the value proposition, not stressing the, 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 the important points that actually matter. Obviously conversion, optimizing on conversions. And I would say, for me, it's enough for today. Honestly, I, I can. I'm not saying I'm losing, <laughs> obviously, but I don't really feel that uh, for the today's episode we can, we can, we, we should be covering more because there are already a lot of things to focus on, considering your pricing pages. And focus on is like geolocalization, different tools yeah. that you have, add-ons, visualization. So there are definitely plenty of things, additional things, additional layers. But these are like the most, the biggest rookie mistakes that I think we have covered. Very simple ones, usually quick fixes, I would say. Mm -hmm. uh, something that can be easily changed. And while we don't recommend A/B price testing, so playing with different price, you can A/B test the design. The design. This is something that you can do a lot. So I would leave our audience with that, Chris. I'm good with that. It's a very, very good challenge. Uh, and uh, see you in the next episode. See you in the next episode. Remember to subscribe to our channel. This was Pricing Masters, SaaS Pricing Season.